Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for being here today. My name is Brett Plumley, and I am the city manager with the city of Los Alamitos. And it is my pleasure, my role at this point in time is to introduce the MC for today's state of the city. And I want to bring up here the superintendent of the Los Alamitos Unified School District. She's also the outgoing chairman of the Chamber of Commerce. And I want to mention that she has been with the school district and in this community since 1985. She started as a teacher. And she, as I think everyone knows, and I know in a very short period of time, she's a cheerleader for the community. And she just, she loves Los Alamitos. She loves the whole entire area. And it is my pleasure to welcome our superintendent, Dr. Sherry Croft. Good morning, LoSal. Um, I absolutely love this event. It's, such, it's wonderful to see so many people come together to really celebrate this community and all of the work that everyone does here. So welcome. This is our 12th annual State of the City Luncheon. And I'm going to start by introducing, this is another great thing about Los Alamitos, the Joint Forces Training Base is here. So we're going to start by, it's my pleasure to introduce the Major General Keith Jones, who will lead us in the Colors Flag Salute National Anthem. Post the colors. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, Colin.
thank you all, and I'd like to uh, offer a round of applause for our color guard and to Staff Sergeant Johnson for helping us. You may be seated. It is now my pleasure to continue with our invocation. If I can call forward Alan McLean from Sir Speedy. Yay. Now that you're nicely seated, could I ask you to please stand again? <laughs> and join me please in the invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity as a community to be here today. We ask, dear Lord, for your guidance and blessings on the city of Los Alamitos, on Mayor Jerry Graham Mejia, on Mayor Pro Tem Richard Murphy, on Council Member Troy Edgar, Council Member Dean Gross, and Council Member Warren Kuzumoto. We pray that you will give them the guidance that truly only you can give. We also ask for your guidance and blessings on the city leadership and the city's dedicated staff. And we especially ask for your guidance and blessing, dear Lord, for the men and women in our military serving the cause of freedom throughout the world. We also ask for your guidance and blessing on the leadership of the Los Alamitos Unified School District, the leadership, officers, and staff of the Los Alamitos Police Department, and the officers and leadership of the Los Alamitos Area Chamber of Commerce. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Alan. Now you may be seated. <laughs> We have a lot of dignitaries in the room today, and some, it's very important that we do some special introductions. While we're introducing also, if you will notice over on this side of the room, we have all of our sponsors for today, which we will be recognizing more later. So we're gonna start with our city, and it is my pleasure to introduce, and if you will please stand, Mayor Jerry Graham Mejia. Mayor Pro Tem Richard Murphy. <laughs> Councilman Warren Kusumoto. <laughs> Councilman Troy Edgar. <laughs> and Councilman Dean Gross. <laughs> City Manager Brett Plumley. <laughs> and our Los Alamitos Chief of Police, Todd Matter. And I have several other people from this city, if you could please hold your applause until the end, but when I call your name, please stand. We have Steven Mendoza, Wendy Quintanar, Emmeline Noda, Corey Lakin, Captain Bruce McAlpine, Cassie Palmer, Janice Shore, Dave Hunt, Lisa Kranitz, and Linda Magnuson. Let's give them a round of applause. Today we're so honored and so blessed to have so much military presence today. Two more special introductions from the military, if you could please stand. Colonel Kim. And Colonel Armstrong. And from Cyprus, we have a few people. If you could hold your applause until the end, I'll read all of them. We have Mayor Leroy Mills, but please stand when I call your name. Councilman Perkosh Norayan, Denise Basham, and Andrew Say, and City Manager John Bahorsky. <laughs> From Seal Beach, we have Mayor Ellery Deaton, Councilman Gary Miller, and City Manager Jill Ingram.
From La Palma, we have Mayor Pro Tem Peter Kim, Councilman Steve Wangbo, and City Manager Ellen Vollmer. And from Stanton, we have Mayor Rigo Ramirez and Mayor Pro Tem Al Ethans. From Congressman Alan Lowenthal's office, we have Robin McCray. And there's going to be a host here, so if you want to hold the applause till the end, but please remain standing. So, um, Robin, if you could remain standing, that would be great. From Assemblyman Travis Allen's, from Travis Allen's office, Chief of Staff Emmanuel Pertusco and Michelle Schultz. And from Assembly Monsoor's office, Chad Morgan. County Supervisor Janet Wynn. Board of Equalization, Michelle Steele. Southern California Association of Governments, Hassan Ikrata and Kevin Gahuli. And that's it, thank you. I told you there were a lot. Um, from Cypress College, and we have uh, a few more from colleges. We have Raul Alvarez and Mark Posner. And from Columbia College, Carl David. If you are from the Orange County Fire Authority, can you please stand? Okay. And from the Los Alamitos Unified School District, we have President, and hold your applause till the end. There's a lot here today. Uh, President uh, Dr. Jeffrey Barkey, um, Clerk Diana Hill, Members Dave Boyer, Meg Catulli, Karen Russell, Assistant Superintendent Mark Johnson, Director Amber Lee Ruiz, and Principals Josh Arnold and Sung Hee Okino. Thank you. If you serve, oh, I forgot we have a third table. And Principal Sally Neiser and Ann Allen. And from the Los Alamitos Education Foundation, we have Randy Hill and Carrie Logue. If you serve on the board uh, for the chamber, please stand. Thank you. And will all military please stand? All military, come on. So it's become very clear to me, if you didn't stand, I just don't have your name on my list. So I should have just said everybody stand in one fell swoop, but we're so happy that you're here. Um, it is really now my pleasure. Your salad has been preset. Please, you are supposed to eat through this or we won't be done. So start eating your salad. And while you're enjoying your salad, it is my pleasure to introduce the new president of the chamber, Los Alamitos Area Chamber of Commerce from Citibank, Mr. Dan Schwartz. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I kind of wanted to uh, go over our events that we had and the things that we did last year. And our goal for this year is just to continue to improve and not necessarily add more, but to do better and be more efficient at the things that we do do. So um, what you'll see here is you'll, you might see yourself in some of these pictures. Um, you might say, hey, I didn't know the chamber did that. And uh, then what you want to do is contact the office. And maybe this year, it's not too late. It's just January. So you haven't missed anything. OK? So every uh, month, we have a breakfast. And um, it's usually the first uh, Friday of the month, except for January and July, where it's the second Friday. And we recognize um, our longtime members. Here in this slot shot is um, Kathy McNally from McNally Electric and Steve Ross from Arrowhead Products. Um, we also take the opportunity to recognize our new members. 
so that they get visibility. And here's a shot of some new members at one of our recent breakfasts. Um, something you may not know, but we um, sponsor jointly with the base um, bi-monthly tours. So if you ever were curious about what's out there, um, I understand you can actually uh, shoot guns, I think, or something like that. So um, if you want to go, these, these people are having tons of fun, and uh, there are simulators out there. Uh, they take you on tours of equipment. Um, it's just really fun to see what's available out there. Um, here's another group of people um, with a huge fire engine. Okay, and um, then we have another group called our Young Professionals. Um, last year that was chaired by uh, Josh Wilson from Southland. And there are young people that get together and they have really, really cool, really, really cool mixers. And there are up and coming leaders of tomorrow. And here, this one is at, um, I believe, Judy, that's at your shop. And, um, and here they had another um, activity at the Laugh Factory. So they do really, really cool things um, and very interesting things. And then the Chamber sponsors uh, trips abroad every year. So um, this year, um, there are two trips later in the year, one to Beijing and the other one to Costa Rica. So those are at the end of the year. So it's a great opportunity to go with friends um, at a really great um, package. Then in August, we have our legislative mixer where um, all of our, le our um, legislative committee has all of our uh, legislators, legislators there and it has an opportunity for everybody to have access to, um, to our legislators. So here's a big group of people. Um, there's our mayor and his wife at the time. And, um, um, okay, then, big event for us, Wingsville's and Rotors, okay? Um, the Wingsville's and Rotors event, here's, uh, this is done jointly with the base. We're working together with them. Um, here's some kids um, at the uh, wall. And um, here's some people just sitting around enjoying the day with the wings and the airplanes and the helicopters. And then our young professionals, this is a great thing. We work jointly with the city on this. Um, and to put it on, our, it's Young Professionals Winter Wonderland. And uh, it's a great partnership with the city uh, for our community. And the kids enjoy it. The school district gets involved. And uh, they just have a lot of fun. OK? So if there's anything in there that you saw that you liked, uh, there'll just be more and better of it um, uh, for those same events this year. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Short. Thank you. <laughs> we're really glad that Dan could make it today. He was uh, sick yesterday, and so we weren't, we weren't sure he was going to make it. So thank you, uh, Chairman Dan. So now um, they'll also, as soon as you're done with your salad, they're going to continue to um, Actually, that I forgot. That's a little out of order. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish before we have lunch with the Wings, Wheels, Rotors, and Expo special introduction. So if I can have join me up here, we need uh, Dan Schwartz, Bev Rigney, Kathy McNally, Judy Clabeau, Johnny Strohmeyer, Chelsea Wilson, Major General Jones, and Kathleen Bonta Banta from. MWR, if all of you could please come up at this time. So as Dan said earlier, uh, one of the one of the most amazing events that we do in this community is the Wings, Wheels, Rotors, and Expo. We hold it on the Joint Forces Training Base. It's just, if you haven't gone, you really need to go. It's utterly, uh, takes your breath away the first time with so much involvement. And what we do is we also gave 30% of all proceeds. It's a free event. We ask for donations at the gate when people come in. And what was donated, we are giving all of the donations to, that we receive at the gate 
to MWR and 30% of any profits from vendors or sponsors for the event. And so this year for a total we're giving to MWR $16,688 and that's really a result of the generosity of this entire community. So I would like to present that to General Flynn. I know it. But you know what? The, what really matters is the real deal, and this is the real deal. That's pretty, but that matters. Thank you. So Thank you. And then we also have a certificate of congressional recognition that was presented to us, and it was really on behalf of the chamber as well as uh, the Joint Forces Training Base, on behalf of um, Sanchez's office. So I'd like to read that. It says. I join with Congress and the people of Orange County in honoring the organization committee for its dedication and skill in mounting this important civic event in this face of very adverse conditions, including the federal government shutdown of 2013. As you know, we weren't sure we were going to have this event until probably three weeks ahead of time, and they really pulled it off in a hurry. So Loretta Sanchez from U.S. Congresswoman, thank you very much. And we present this plaque also to General Jones and Joint Forces Training Base. Well, Dr. Kropp, and for all of those that contributed to uh, wings, wheels, and rotors, uh, the planning committees, uh, and, and all of those that, that volunteered to help, uh, I, I just want to express my heartfelt thanks. Uh, to, to all of you for this. Uh, the, the, the donation is, is much appreciated and will, we will be put to good use. But what is truly the essence of, of this is the partnership that we create uh, with the community uh, and, uh, and with its citizens that, uh, that we put on. Uh, so thank you so very much uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to partner with you uh, and, and we look forward to doing it again next year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, just literally, um, you stopped eating still. If you haven't finished your salad, keep eating. And so um, there were so many volunteers, and all the people up here really were significant in getting the committees going. It's next year, October 26th. Tom Lasser runs that committee, the chair, but he uh, was unable to make it today. So now they're going to start serving lunch, and we're not going to resume the program until 12.20. But I always like to leave everyone with a little something to look at in our transition here. So over on that screen, we have a short two or three minute video. You can talk through the video, eat your lunch when it gets served, and finish your salad. But one thing I love about Los Alamitos is it's great to be a kid here. And kids are something that really unites all of us, and it takes a village for sure. So without further ado, uh, enjoy lunch in your cell. See you at 1220 and we have a little video. major sponsors for today's event and three of them are event sponsors and we're extremely grateful when I call your name from that group please stand so we can give you recognition if you are from care ambulance please stand Do we have anyone yay thank you if you are from the Los Alamitos Medical Center please stand 
time. And if you are from Ganal Lumber, please stand. I recognize them, not from being sponsors, but because I, ha I bought so many doors there. So, um, you know, love that. And then we also have table sponsors and many other sponsors. When I call your name, we'll hold your applause until the end, but please remain standing. If you are from Southland Credit Union, please stand. Edison. <laughs> if you are from Edison, please stand. Beach City Fitness. Beach Fitness. Correction noted. Cottonwood Church. Los Alamitos Unified School District. I, I look at. I know who you are, and you're not standing. <laughs> Dr. Barkey, at least you could stand. Casa Youth Shelter. Alamitos Eye Care. Okay, John Osborne. What's with you people? Sir Speedy. And the Forest Lawn Flower Shop. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from uh, Los Alamitos Unified School District. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, President Dr. Jeffrey Barkey. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Kropp is a little bit nervous because I sometimes will say things a little, uh, you know, off script and so she's sitting there right now going, oh goodness please, just let him stay on script. She handed me a clicker, I don't know how to use this thing, but I'll, I'll give it my, uh, my best. Uh, it has been my honor, I have the privilege of sitting next to uh, Major General Jones and um, as a matter of fact he was recruiting me to uh, join the National Guard or something and so... Next year you may see me here in a, in a different uniform, if you will. You know, there's a lot of politicians in this room, and uh, I'm not quick enough. There's, there's probably a good joke about, you know, all the politicians in a room, et cetera. So I'll let, uh, I'll let Dave Boyer give the punchline to that. Uh, but I'm always humbled when I come to this event, um, not because of the politicians, and I don't really consider myself one, even though technically this is an elected position, uh, but it's because of the men in uniform that, that come and sit in this room. And uh, the reality is we're all here and able to sit here and enjoy the beautiful weather and sip coffee and chit chat because of the men in uniform in this room. And um, and it's because of you folks that this world is just a little bit better place. So. Um, I honor your service. Uh, God bless you all. Okay, school district stuff. So first of all, yes, I am the, the current president of the school board. Uh, Dave Boyer was the past president. And so I'm going to give a little introduction, but what I really want to do is turn over most of this presentation to Dave Boyer, since it was really under his tutelage, if you will, that a lot of the accomplishments that, uh, that I and he will talk about um, that he really oversee, oversaw. So the first thing that I think is incredibly impressive is we've got just shy of 10,000 students uh, that attend our district schools. That's a huge number and a huge responsibility. And our role really is to serve all of you, to serve the children, to serve the community, and do the best we can to make this the greatest place in California, in Southern California, uh, to raise kids and to attend schools. So with those students also comes a lot of employees, about 9,000 employees, arguably uh, one of the largest employers uh, in the local community as well. And most importantly, 20,000 parents that trust us to take really good care of their kids and to educate them. And we're so humble every time uh, we have an opportunity to interact with the community because of our awesome responsibility um, to service the community, to service the parents, and to service the kids. We have nine different campuses. Our one mission, igniting unlimited possibilities for students now and throughout their lives. 
We realize that what we do is not just limited to the K through 12 years, but it's really in preparation of them then stepping out for the rest of their lives. So we take our responsibility very seriously. And the LOSAL legacy. So excellence in academics, athletics, activities, and the arts are our four A's and really important as well and the way, one way in which we um, uh, bridge and, and meld with our community is through LAIF. And LAIF is Los Alamitos Education Foundation. It's our nonprofit wing, if you will, that raises funds and puts on wonderful programs that we're not able to with the resources we have. They supplement and add to what we do uh, with after school and summer school programs, et cetera. And, um, and we're honored to work with them and have them part of our community and part of our district. So now, I'm going to turn the rest over to our former president, uh, Dave Boyer, and uh, let him continue the process and share with you all the wonderful things that we've done over the last year. Well, good afternoon. It's, it is my privilege to, um, to be here and represent our school board. We have a, a really uh, unique school board, uh, and I'm proud. It's all of our members, and Meg Catulli, Karen Russell, Diana Hill, our, now our the clerk, and then Dr. Barkey handing the reins off to, to uh, him. It's just, it's awesome. And then I can't say enough about our superintendent, Dr. Kropp. Uh, the six of us work as a governing board, and we work well together. We don't agree on everything, but we work through it, and that's the great thing uh, about our district and working with these people. So I get to speak about what we accomplish, and it's through their work and through the other employees that are here. And our principals are awesome. Josh Arnold, Dr. Arnold at our high school, Phenomenal. Just if you have a high school student or know a high school student, talk about what's going on at Los Al. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal place to go to school. So with that, we'll go to the presentation. Um, I want to also thank the Chamber of Commerce for what they do. And just awesome. Um, I'm now back on the board again. Uh, I, it's a result of the Chamber being the president in 2003 that I decided to run and become a school board member. And the Chamber is a vital part of our community, and, and, and Los Al is a special place. Someone told me a long time ago, so Los Al is kind of like the Mayberry RFD of Orange County. And I think that's so true, um, and that's why I'm proud to have served on the school board now for 10 years, and um, you know, I can't go get a gallon of milk without running to somebody and talking about things. And I think that's what makes it magical here at Los Al, is that ability. And uh, we really value our relationship with the city and our, and our city council people, and, our, and, our, and, and that ability to talk, and uh, business owners, and the whole thing. So with that, let me see if I can get the clicker to work, so that I can get a lesson on this. Just Okay, so here it is. Number one. I love number one. Winners keep score, I always say. So number one elementary school in Orange County. We're the top 1% of high schools in the United States. Out of 44,000 and change, almost 45,000 high schools, we're in the top 1% when you look at our high school and how we, how we rate. We have the highest college enrollment rate in Orange County. So there's a great service we found and we're able to track now our kids as they leave not only how they get in college, and how they are completing through college, and we're, we're starting to do that. So igniting unlimited possibilities for students not here, but also for their lifetime has become a real goal for us. Our district API, now this is a, out of a thousand points, and this was, came from uh, no student left behind, the benchmark, and that we look at is how are we doing. The state's benchmark is we want schools at, at uh, 800. Our benchmark for all of our schools is 922. Phenomenal. It's gone up every year. Um, that I've been here on the school board, and I, I tell you, it's taken a lot of work, and we've made cuts for the last nine years. And to see that benchmark continue to move forward has been awesome, and that's a tribute to our staff and our teachers. Uh, we're number three in California for closing the Achieve Gap. And people go, what is that? Well, this is the, the work that really needs to be done in our state with minority groups and groups that, are, uh, uh, that are, have socioeconomic issues. We're number three in taking students that have those, those needs, those issues, and, and moving them to the forefront. And that, that just tells you we do it better than anybody. Um, the College Board Honor Roll, four years in a row. And this has to do with advanced placement offerings that we offer. And, that, uh, and they look at how, not only how many we offer, but how many kids take the tests and how many kids pass those tests and send kids off to college with college credit, which saves tuition dollars for parents, which is really important as a financial planner, I'll tell you. So we do a really good job of doing that, and we really have a huge uh, breadth of uh, AP offerings. And all of our schools are California distinguished schools. 
modernization projects. You know, I got on the board uh, 10 years ago and said, what do we need to do? Hey, we need to modernize our facilities. And through that process uh, and through a lot of hard work, we got the, uh, the bonds passed and we've been good stewards of that money. We're on time, we're on budget, we've modernized our facilities, we've gotten lots of matching money from the state as a result of being uh, efficient and moving quickly and moving forward. Uh, we've improved our fields and grounds. Uh, at Oak right now, middle school, we're doing a $2 million project on the, on the facilities over there, on the, just the fields alone. And uh, in the school, we're spending another $11, $12 million to get that school up and going. Technology upgrades, our infrastructure, our new devices, I think we just passed last night in the warrants. I think we bought, I don't know how many Google books, but it was hundreds and uh, maybe thousands. I don't know. But we have cards and we're, and we're really embracing technology. And we built that into all of the schools. And now we're in the process of upgrading. And it continues to change. You know, technology never slows down. Um, one thing I'm really proud of in the work by uh, especially uh, Dr. Barkey and Karen Russell on our substance abuse task force and, and uh, Todd Mattern and our local um, law enforcement folks from our, all of our local cities here uh, and, 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 and parents that have, uh, and in the community to really work on, on this issue in Los Alamitos. And we've done a, a really good job of, of kind of identifying the problems and working together to come up with solutions. We have a bullying prevention task force and program as well. Violence Prevention and Response Task Force is very important uh, as we've now uh, added some elementary counselors on campus, supervising, training, uniforms. We now have name tags. So if you go to a campus, you've got to check in and you've got to get a name tag. And we're really working on just safety. And you've seen what's happened around the country the last couple of years. We really want our students, to, safety is one of our number one um, missions. And so we're really working on that. We put window film that's protective uh, for the glass so it won't shatter and so that it protects the uh, safety of those. Um, uh, Dan Brandt, our, our SRO, is he here today? I don't know, but uh, Officer Brandt is awesome. And we want to thank the city. That has been awesome to have uh, him on our campus. And all the things we work with the city on traffic mitigation, the consultant emergency supplies we have uh, in all the classrooms now in case we have a big earth, the big earthquake happens. We've got supplies to try to help with that. Um, our city council, district working groups. This is something we started nine years ago. Uh, and we continue to move forward and where we meet uh, on a regular basis with the city to work on uh, issues that affect the city, that affect our school district, and try to work together to really look at what we can do. And our, our parks are our school district grounds, and so we try to work with the city for parks and rec programs and, and for the betterment for the whole community. Um, the Joint Council Board meetings, we are, are talking right now about joint use agreements. We have a blanket joint use agreements, and now we're really sitting down and working through those individual joint use agreements. Um, as a result of the community bathroom at Oak, uh, we, spent, uh, we redid the gym at Oak. The city came along and said, hey, we'd like to really get a public bathroom out there as we're doing this, and how can we do that? So they made a contribution of about 300000 You see the check there, and we really appreciate that, appreciate that using uh, those tax dollars to really put uh, a facility there that we need. And um, uh, like I said, we're working forward on all these agreements, and, and uh, our partnership also continues with crossing guards. The city helps us with the safety for our students, our police, police support uh, at our four of our largest schools, and uh, we talked about uh, Officer Dan Brandt and, and the 50% paid by the city. We're so appreciative of that. And 25 by uh, Seal Beach and, uh, and the district. And he's been a positive role model on our campus. It makes a big difference. Uh, he quickly intervenes, assists with investigations, and offers our, his uh, immediate expertise. And uh, he's working on a, a myriad of projects with us to how to make things safer and better at Los Al. And then just our partnership with Los Alamitos in its, uh, our performing groups. Um, you know we have national show choir champions three years in a row going for a fourth one. Uh, we just take these things for granted. Um, our, our, um, our, our youth, um, uh, all of the Interact Club, the Leo Club, we have so many different things that are involved. But um, the big event, which I know we got started when I was on the chain, was Wings, Wheels, and Rotors. If you haven't been to that event, you've got to go to that event. It just gets better and better and better. And when you talk to people around the country and you talk about Los Alamitos, they think about a couple things. They think about Los Alamitos, our city. They think about the racetrack. But you know what? They think about uh, you know, our, our city in the school district, what the school district does, and they think just about um, uh, just our community. It's a special place. And so when I talk to and I'm in airports around the country talking to people, uh, you say Los Al, they remember us from either a national show choir or, a, you know, our, or our base here, or just so many things. So anyway, I'm appreciative of, what we, of the partnership. We look forward to great things for the city of Los Alamitos, and we want to thank all the business owners here that have helped and contributed. Because I know we come to you every day, every day uh, for, you know, for the students and for money. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, the one last thing. I think it's important. The Wall Street Journal says Los Alamitos, one of the 10 neighborhoods with the best education bang for your buck in the United States. And that says a lot right there. 
Los, Los Alamitos is a great place to live, work, and go to school. And I want to thank uh, you, the city, and uh, I look forward to our ongoing partnership. Uh, and we want to thank you, the city, for all your support and what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And now it is really my pleasure to introduce the mayor. And so I'm going to say a few things about her, but I'd like her to come on up. And this is mayor, the new mayor, Jerry Graham Mejia. Mejia, come on up, Jerry. <laughs> uh, mayor Jerry Graham Mejia has lived, been educated, works, serves, and raised her family in Los Alamitos. She's been a part of this community since 1955, nearly 60 years. She comes from a large Irish family with six children. All of them were raised in Los Al. She attended Los Alamitos schools. She and her husband, Javier, were able to serve as her son, Gage, attended Los Alamitos schools. I know that she, has, she also has a small business in our community for many years. She's been on PTAs, raised funds for schools. And now, this is her seventh year as a council member as she's serving the community. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mayor Jerry Graham Mejia. Thank you all for coming and sitting through this I'm extremely uh, interesting show that we've got for you today. Uh, I'd like to start off by introducing the council. We have uh, Richard Murphy, who is our mayor pro tem. We have Troy Edgar, who is our council member and past mayor. Dean Gross and both Warren Kuzumoto, who are also past mayors and our current council members. I'd like to start off by saying just a real special thank you to Stephen. If you look at the picture up there, uh, Stephen, thank you so much. That picture is seven years old and 60 pounds lighter, so I'm very appreciative that you're going to all remember me looking much, much better. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Los Alamitos City Council is proud to present the State of the City Address. We are in this together. We have much to be proud of in Los Alamitos this past year, following or some of the highlights from the various departments. We are proud of our police department, and this year, after retirement of two veteran officers, both Rick DeLeon and Sharon Kerbo, we were able to promote two sergeants and two corporals who were from within our own ranks. And we know how important it is for our community to have consistency with our staff, so we were really pleased to be able to do that within our own ranks. Additionally, we filled three vacancies by hiring police officers whom completed field training and who are now fully engaged with our community. We appointed a homeless liaison officer to the OC social services and healthcare agencies. We participate in county and statewide drills and are participating in alert OC adding the capability for two-way messaging. This is something that I think the council and uh, the school district are very, very excited about. Um, we worked very hard to make this happen. Um, this is so exciting for us. The school resource officers back, and I know some of the other speakers have already mentioned that, but for us, it was a huge accomplishment to partner with all those other communities and make this work. We have uh, Officer Dan Brandt, who graduated from Los Alamitos High School and has earned respect of the students and the faculty alike. Dan provides a much needed presence on campus as both a deterrent and a liaison between the students and the administration. Another accomplishment for our police department was last year through hard work and continued investigation we were able to apprehend a serial robber who in a period of two years robbed our U.S. Bank three times. Congratulations to our police department for such great work. Another branch of our city is our public works team. They are completing the construction on our newest park, Coyote Creek. And I'd like to just take a little side note, you know, um, these parks are something that don't just happen very easily. We had our prior mayor, Ken Parker, who sat on the uh, Rivers and Mountains Conservancy, and he was able to get us grant funding in the amount of $1.4 million. But as he moved on, Troy Edgar, our council member, he stu stood up and took the torch and carried it and saw this all the way to through fruition. So Without your help, Troy, this would have never been realized, and it's going to be a great opportunity for our, our uh, community. We were able to expedite improvements to fencing, basketball courts over at Laurel, Orville Lewis Park, and our goal is to provide beautiful and open space for our community to enjoy. 
We have continued to improve our community in ongoing maintenance, including replacing vulnerable trees and outdated street signs to ensure the public safety. And some of these trees had become so in such bad condition that they were actually dropping limbs onto the vehicles of the car. So it was really a safety issue. In addition to that, the street signs had been uh, so degraded that you couldn't even read them. So while those seem like little things, they really do, they are, are steps to take out for, uh, take care of our community. The city realized we faced a significant public safety issue that affected our alleyways. Due to heavy traffic and excessive speeds, we enacted a speed bump pilot program. This was to protect our children. This program has been met with great support by the residents and the businesses. For our next set of accomplishments, we move on to recreation and community services. And Emmeline, you're going to be proud of me that I got that right instead of saying Parks and Rec. Uh, recreation has a banner year this year. The 4th of July event at the Joint Forces Training Base continues to be an outstanding event while maintaining free sponsorship. We have successfully relocated the event to the tarmac, improving safety and accessibility. We produce an event that attracts 20,000 spectators while, re while remaining revenue neutral. And I don't know for any of you who have been involved in an event like this, the fact that it doesn't cost the city anything is an amazing accomplishment for the partnerships that work together to make that happen. Now a benefit for our younger residents. As a part of our 2013 community give back, we expanded the summer parks program at Little Cottonwood and Orville Lewis Parks from seven to nine weeks with extended hours. Now we offer free structured activities, including water day Fridays and six free excursions with bus transportation. This meant that no child was excluded due to the inability to pay. And I don't know about for you, but for me, the children are the future of this community, and for them to be able to be a part and not feel left out, that was something that was near and dear to our hearts, so we were very excited to, to have that happen. And without the support of the council, we couldn't have done that, so thank you to all of you. Southland Credit Union's Race on the Base Reverse Triathlon is now the largest in the nation. We have 1,200 registered for 2013, and this event has surpassed all known events of its kind in the United States. And I think that we need to give our Parks and Recs a, a hand for that. <laughs> they continue always to work hard and, and come up with new and innovative, innovative programs. We have a new uh, event that's called OC California Race Series. And what this is, is there are four races within the cities of Los Alamitos, Cypress, and Seal Beach. And if anyone completes three of those races, then they are going to receive one of these medals. And what's very exciting for us is the first opportunity for these uh, medals to be awarded will be at this next Race on the Base. So if you want to learn more, go to raceonthebase.com. And right now, we have 380 people who are eligible uh, to receive that award. And one of them is one of our council members. And you're making me feel bad. Okay. Having uh, the pleasure to serve on the uh, city council working group with the school district has really been something that I have enjoyed in my tenure as a council member. Um, you'll see some of these same slides on all, all of the previous uh, statements that were up here. It's, we're on a budget, so we had to share. We couldn't go off, off track there. Uh, we were given the unique opportunity to partner with the school district during their renovations, and we did contribute $300,000 to improve the Oak Gym and those much needed restrooms outside. For those of you who don't know, we own a piece of the building. It's kind of a unique uh, situation. The school district owns the land, but that's why we felt it was in our purview to make this donation so that we could make the upkeep to this gym and make it something that we could be proud of. And not only that, but our, our Parks and Recs programs uh, heavily use that facility, so we felt that this one-time contribution was definitely um, a good thing for us. Little Cottonwood was host to our Halloween trunk or treat where the highlight event was the treasure hunt. All the Halloween events that the city has hosted, this year's was the highest event. This event provides a safe and fun opportunity for our kids to celebrate Halloween. And now for one of my favorites. Another amazing event we offer is the Winter Wonderland at the Plaza. This is produced by the city, the Chamber of Commerce, and it hosted 2,500 attendees, three snow areas, four sled runs, photos with Santa, local performers, food trucks and vendors, and a snowman photo area with real snow. This was done with no impact to the general fund, and that was thanks to several sponsors, especially uh, Bandai Foundation. And Josh, if you don't mind, I'm going to share a little story that um, really touched my heart. 
when I attended this year, Josh from the Young Professionals shared with us that in a prior holiday event uh, for Winter Wonderland, a woman approached him and said, you know, I'm a single mom and I have small children, and if you didn't have these free events, my children would never have had the opportunity to see snow and to play in it. And I think that when we can have that kind of impact on our community and change lives, I think that we're very blessed to be in those positions. This year we have the highest annual swim lesson attendance in history. We are host to some amazing events, camps, and swim meets. Recently we recognized our women's water polo team gold medalist from the last year's Olympics. We were able to invite them to a city council meeting and uh, we recognized them, but I think we were more excited than they were to be there. So anyways, we got the opportunity to tell them how proud of them we were and what a, what a great partnership with the base that we have. And we are the recipients of all of this positive publicity. <coughs> In Los Alamitos, our seniors are near and dear to us. We are also pleased that we are able to maintain the senior lunch program through federal sequestration and we have doubled our balanced fitness class registration since its beginning in 2008 to more than 40 students. This class provides seniors with a free opportunity to increase mobility, which helps them remain an active part of our community. During this past year, the city administrative staff has assisted us in the recruitment of a city manager. We are pleased to announce the appointment of Mr. Brett Plumley. Mr. Plumley comes to us from the city of La Puente, where he was the city manager for two and a half years. Brett has extensive background in municipal government. Prior to serving as the city manager in La Puente, Brett served as assistant manager in La Quinta, director of administrative services in El Segundo, finance director of Rolling Hills Estates, and assistant finance director of La Mirada. Brett lives in Seal Beach with his wife Michelle and his two beautiful daughters, Emily and Katie. So put your hands together for our new city manager. Thank you, Mayor Graham Mejia. I appreciate the nice introduction and I appreciate being here today and being able to be a part of the state of the city and I want to thank everyone and um, thank the city council and the chamber and the school district and staff that is at the table. A great team that we have in the city of Los Alamitos and we're excited to be here to move this community, this great community forward and there are a couple of common themes that you'll hear today. One is partnership and we're in this together and the other you're going to hear, I'm starting it with the revenues, is Shop Los Alamitos. So we also appreciate all the other cities being here today and we want to encourage shopping in Los Alamitos is also a common theme. This first particular slide um, is emphasizing the general fund revenues in the city of Los Alamitos and Fiscal year 13-14 included in the budget, just a little over $11.6 million. And the top two revenue sources that are highlighted, property taxes and sales and use tax, make up almost 50% of the total general fund revenues. And we use those revenues to finance the operations and to move this great community forward. So that is the emphasis on sales and use tax and property tax. and we want to uh, continue to emphasize shopping in Los Alamitos. This is a just a chart to show a balanced budget in terms of a revenues and versus expenditures within the general fund showing balanced general fund balance budget with revenues equal to expenditures and this is another chart that's intended to show that just a common theme the city council and the city of Los Alamitos want to emphasize that we have a balanced budget, we want to continue a long term in financial sustainability, and we want to continue to maintain a healthy fund balance. Um, we are going to, upcoming within the next few months, we're going to start the budget process. We'll have a mid-year review coming up in February, and then we'll get into the budget kickoff in our budget process as we move forward toward the next fiscal year. And in terms of we're in it together and partnerships and we want to highlight community development and some of the accomplishments within that the city council has moved forward within this past year. Business success, a key partner is our business community and that equals the city's success. This first particular slide is a before and after picture and the next 
series of slides that you're going to see are before and after pictures showing the design on the top left with the reality in the picture below. And this first one is Olson Homes, City Council and Planning Commission over this past year assisted Olson Homes in bringing in 17 new homeowners into the city. This is Chase Bank that opened within this past year as well. And again, you show the design up on the left and the reality. And this is over on Ball and Bloomfield. In terms of the a recent and a very upcoming and exciting new opening that we anticipate to open very soon is Spin Pizza. So the reality is coming into being and we're anticipating that opening next week and we're very excited about that new opening of the business. If you drive by Los Alamitos Boulevard, that is a reality and that's, that's the work that's being done and it's just almost ready to go. Very excited about that. This is a picture of again before and after. We have the parking structure that's being built over at the Medical Plaza. And we're currently constructing one deck a week. So you see, the, again, the picture in the top left and the reality within the picture below. The next slide is the, this is the upcoming and ongoing medical center, medical office building. The next series of slides continue to emphasize our partnerships, that we are in this together. The first slide shows the partnership of the city council interacting with the Commissioners, and that's an ongoing relationship that is very important to the city. This is the Winter Wonderland that has been highlighted, and this is a collaboration of a number of groups that took the Chamber of Commerce, the Young Professionals, the school district, the city, and many sponsors to present the Winter Wonderland. It's just an outstanding event, a very successful event highlighting the partnerships coming together within the community. This is an example of the City Council supporting the business community and sponsorships that have been recognized over this past calendar year. This represents the partnership with the various commissions in working together. They had a series of joint meetings within the past year working on the general plan update. Sugar Beet Festival inaugural year was this last year. And we want to thank Larry Strother and Diana Hill for bringing a sense of history and community pride to Los Alamitos. And with that, I will ask the mayor to come back up, Mary Grandma Mejia, to talk about projects on the horizon. Thank you very much. That's why we hired him, because he's really good. Uh, as the mayor, I've had the opportunity to meet with each of the council members to uh, try to embrace their hopes for the future of Los Alamitos. So some of these are the ideas that were brought forward by the council. On the horizon, the city will begin to revisit the street revitalization of Los Alamitos Boulevard, both the positive be benefits and the potential impacts. We will continue to look at ways to stimulate our economy without the red tape, tearing off of our successful program permit rebate program, which benefits both residents and local businesses more than we had expected. We will be mindful of long-term planning issues while positioning vacant properties. We are public servants and we are here to serve the community, whether it be a small homeowner, small business, charity, neighboring city, or legislators, we are all in this together. Thank you. I do want to give a special thanks to Warren because this uh, <laughs> If I didn't do real well at this state of the city, Warren's given me the unique, unique opportunity of having to do this two times in one year. So Warren, I've got a special something for you after this, all right? And then I'll bring up Sherry Croft. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. That was great. I think Warren didn't want to come up here and talk. <laughs> I'm not sure, but that's my guess. So um, we only have about 30 more minutes, but just kidding. Um, you know, at the chamber, we have a motto in the chamber, and it's taking care of business. So hopefully we are taking care of business, and hope we didn't move it too fast. But if I could have here for the ending a few people join me, I'd like to have uh, Brett, city manager, come join me. And Dan, the uh, new chairman for the Los Alamitos Area Chamber of Commerce.
Tamara. So really, on behalf of all of us, uh, I love the slogan, we're in this together. We really are in this together to make it this a great place to, uh, well, here. Uh -huh. Because Los Alamitos is a great place to live, work, learn, shop, and play. Where everybody knows your name. So the centerpieces are from Forest Lawn, and you get to take those home. So uh, whoever's birthday is closest to today, you get those flowers. And if you don't want them, give them away to someone else at the table. You guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Los Alamitos City. Make it a great day, and thanks for coming. You did great. I love you. Okay, in the aftermath of the 2014 State of the City for Los Alamitos here at the Eagle's Nest, uh, I'm talking with the uh, newly minted mayor of Los Alamitos, Thank Jerry you. Graham Mejia, um, 2014 mayor. That's right. You must have a few things on your mind to accomplish this year. Your, uh, basically, your marching orders as you presented them to this uh, audience today was something to the effect of we're all in this together. Right, right. It's been a long time coming for you. You've been on the council a number of years now, a number of, uh, of cycles. That's right. Your first turn as mayor, <laughs> uh, mayor pro tem previously, but... but right. You've acceded to the uh, lofty height, the mayor of Los Alamitos. Yes, where you get the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, what are you going to do in 2014? You're here now. The ball is in your court. What are you going to do with it? Well, I think if you want to talk more locally, in, in the entire time I've been on the council, my whole goal has only been to be the voice of the people, to bring forward issues that the neighbors come to you and say, hey, we have a problem with this, can you handle it at the city? And I think in some cases we've been very successful in doing that, and I feel very proud of those accomplishments. But when you talk more regionally, um, we're in a battle right now for the uh, I-405 to fight the toll roads, and we've been working with Alan Monsoor and Diana Carey from the city of uh, Westminster, and we've managed to stop so far the toll lane, but we're looking to reach out to the Sacramento legislators to see if we can find a way to pass some legislation to where no toll lanes in Orange County are imposed upon the people without going to a vote of the people. So we've got a, we've got a big fight on our hands, but we're looking forward to it. We're very organized. We're working with Townsend, which is a public uh, relations agency, and they're very, very connected. And we're hoping that we can do this for the people because I think it's a double-dip tax. I mean, we have volunteered on two separate cycles to pay for Measure M money, and that's a self-imposed tax and so now they want to use that money to improve the freeways but then charge us to drive on them and I think that's egregious so what our hope is is to make sure that no matter what moving forward unless the people vote to uh, have a toll lane which I can't imagine they ever will uh, that won't happen okay so your, your your scope your strategy is bigger than just as a pothole public servant uh, for Los Alamitos uh, no, no not disparaging that term in any way but sure. but, but you've been over the years, I've noticed um, you've waved a flag for the little guy for a long time now, and and those potholes notwithstanding, but other issues too in Los Alamitos sure. that are a very sort of provincial, very local idea. Um, you see yourself as moving into a bigger picture now? Or? Well, you know, I think as uh, the role of the mayor, you have to step out a little bit beyond uh, just the local issues, but I, I find that my heart always brings me back to just really dealing with the people. I mean, I've grown up here in Los Alamitos. I know a lot of people that have remained since I was a child. And so it's really, truly a small town connection. And uh, if I don't do what they ask me to do, they'll run me out of town on a rail. So I got to watch myself and make sure that I don't lose touch with um, what I started, what my, my initial agenda was, which was just to look out for the, the residents and the businesses. Yeah. So you're still open to discussion for those potholes on Catella or, <laughs> or Farquhar or some other? Sure, sure. We're looking for that funding. And, you know, um, John, I know you were very involved in the Prologis issue, and you did a great job. And I can't thank you enough because I think your piece was very instrumental in helping us be successful with stopping that. But, you know, working with Cypress to make sure that whatever that development is there, um, can be a benefit the, to them, but also not uh, a real detriment to our community. And that is really high on my radar. Right now, there's no plans for developing the property, but you and I know that at some point in the future that will happen. And so 
um, I'd like to be involved in that and also St. Isidore's you know we've become very involved with that church as of late and from what I understand they were able to secure the loan is that correct great and so they're in escrow and just continuing to work with that uh, entity to save that beautiful little jewel for our community because once you lose your history there's there's nothing to go back to and draw from and I think that's a great uh, location that at some point in the future when it's restored maybe our school district can use it for field trips for our kids and I think that's uh, that's a real blessing so so your your thoughts on 2014 are a little bit bigger than uh than, uh, than uh, Mayberry RFD, as someone said earlier. <laughs> well, only because the position, I think, lends to that. But, you know, uh, our council has been trying to work very hard to uh, get along and be productive. And I think that's our, that's our theme for this uh, State of the City was we're in this together. And so I'm going to continue to try and foster the relationships with the uh, council members so that we can all be effective and uh, see our things that we want to have happen in the community through to fruition, not because it's good for the council members but because it's good for the community and we have to remember that those council members they all represent people in this community it's not just one uh, council member that speaks for everyone so I think it's important to have a global look at the council and make sure that uh, we do our best to get along okay you know last question sure for a number of years now we've had a very bifurcated divided uh, council that's no secret mm -hmm. every uh, we, we've seen uh, some, some bloody feuds up there right. from the Diaz uh, um, for a number of years, for a number of different reasons. Right. Do you see that as behind us now? Well, I'm hoping that the um, issues that come before us this year, because this is my you know year as uh, the mayor, are going to be ones that we can find some common ground. You know, John, you know in the past that there have been some very big issues, the trash lawsuit and contract. Um, we're taking steps, I think, to make sure moving forward, looking at the trash contract potentially this year, that we don't make the same mistakes twice. I think that we have learned and we're moving on and uh, we're going to do what's best for this community. Okay, well, I'm sure you will. Uh, the mayor for 2014, I introduced Jerry Graham Mejia. She'll be in our faces for a, an entire year. <laughs> Especially John's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I need that kind yeah. of in my face. Um, or I go to sleep. Anyway, thank you so much. Thanks, John. Thanks for being there for our community. And we look forward to a very productive year under your mayorship. Thanks, John. Jerry Graham Mejia. Thanks. Great job. I just loved it. It is. Great. Good job, Brad. Congratulations. You told me not to shoot your ex. You were sick. All right. Do it anyway. I have strategy. Brad?